now let's see what we can do with this right i so far had a system where i had seven inputs i0 i1 up to i6 and i had five registers r0 to r5 okay now in general i can't really say how many inputs i might have to deal with uh, or rather let's say that i want to generalize this system right so that rather than solving only this particular differential equation can it also solve any other arbitrary kind of problems which have a similar structure right and more importantly which require basically these types of operations multiply and add subtract or compare okay so anything which requires only those two types of operations multiplication or add compare and uh, subtract i should in principle be able to implement on this hardware that i have right the problem is i can only manage something which has up to seven inputs and which needs five registers okay now i would like to at least be able to handle an unlimited number of inputs right if i say that i want to handle unlimited inputs and unlimited registers i can't really think of a way to handle this but what if i say i will fix the number of registers to be something finite maybe only these five or maybe i'll go up to you know some other number right i'll i'll see whatever is suitable for the amount of hardware that i have available to me and choose some value n some number of registers but it will be a finite set okay the inputs on the other hand i0 i1 rather than restricting it to just 7 let me try and say okay you know i'll have allow for much more than that okay now how do i do this that's what that uh, you know the bubble diagram on the right is showing all that it's saying is look right now the arithmetic previously rather the arithmetic was taking inputs from either the registers or from the main inputs instead let me force the arithmetic unit to only take values coming from the registers and its output also has to go back to the registers okay so the arithmetic unit in other words can read both its inputs from registers right and its output also has to go back to a register now in some ways this simplifies things because since the number of registers is finite and known ahead of time i can basically you know choose my encoding clearly that way right make sure that i uh, know how to handle invalid cases and so on everything can be done neatly the question is what do i do with the other values that i need for computation the constants like you know c1 c2 a and so on or the inputs x y u etc okay what i'm going to say is i will introduce this concept called loading from some external memory either you know uh, either a memory which where basically this would be you know this large block over here would be a large amount of external storage right which can store as many values or as many variables as you want and the load instruction will allow you to pick any one of those values and put them into one register okay similarly the store instruction would allow me to take a value from some register and put it back into some location in memory okay so how does this solve my problem what it says is supposing the actual uh system that you were trying to implement right was not something as simple as the differential equation instead of having seven inputs it actually had let's say 25 inputs okay i don't have 25 registers which means that i would now need to break up my operations and say i explicitly need to load from load some value from memory into one of the registers do the computation whatever it is and if i find that i am running short of registers right i mean i can't hold all the values that i need at the moment i will need to take some value that, that i have in a register and put it back into the memory or external storage okay so by having this load and this store operation it allows me to completely expand the number of inputs or values on which i can operate right while still having only a finite amount of register storage over here right now what next is this all that i need remember we still had this problem of deciding what to do next if i 
uh, depending on whether the condition x is less than or a or x is greater than or equal to a right which means that i also need to have some way of checking this condition and then deciding what to do okay and the simplest way probably in order to do that would be once again introduce a new type of instruction so what is this new instruction that we have i'll call it a branch right so what does a branch instruction do it basically changes the address that is sent to that sequencing rom based on some decision right so what is this decision in our case the decision would be that comparison operation which check whether x is less than a right it would set some flag somewhere in the system and based on that flag i would decide either yes i need to branch back to instruction number 0 and once again repeat the entire thing or no i can just proceed further from here or i could even have it the other way you know i, I if the condition is not satisfied i actually need to jump somewhere else okay now i have written that you know you would probably have two kinds of branches one is a conditional branch and the other is an unconditional branch but strictly speaking you don't even need to do that right you can just have one type of branch a conditional branch right and how do i make that an unconditional branch make the condition something trivial right check if 0 is equal to 0 jump right so it's always satisfied okay so conditional branches are the only the real thing that need to be added over here so if you look at this now what we basically have is we have now come up with a way of encoding instructions right where i have essentially three kinds of instructions one is the arithmetic or arithmetic and logic type of instruction right which corresponds to the actual operations that need to be performed then i have load and store instructions which basically allow me to expand the number of inputs or the so, uh, the parameter space with which i am working and then i have conditional branches which basically allow me to change the control flow of my set of instructions i can change where the next instruction comes from okay and by having these three types of instructions it is sufficient to pretty much do any kind of computation that you can think of putting down as an algorithm okay in fact you will find that uh, you know if you go and look at something like the basic instruction set of something like the risk 5 risk 5 processor it has a very clean and very neatly defined instruction set which basically allows you to exactly identify three types of instructions right the alu the load store and the branches okay of course it has multiple different kinds of arithmetic units it has multiple variants on the load store and it also has multiple variants on branch but those are just sort of you know what they call syntactic sugar right something which makes it easier to write certain kinds of operations right but otherwise just these three are the most basic types of operation that you need for a general purpose programmable processor okay so effectively what has happened over here we have constructed something which has an alu unit an arithmetic and logic unit it has some way of loading and storing data from some external memory and it can change the flow of control with the instructions that it has okay now the reason why i went through all of this is to sort of bring out clearly that you know you can sort of start from the idea of a pure hardware implementation and slowly generalize that until the point where it becomes programmable right which means you could also think of stopping somewhere in between you might be able to come up with something which is programmable only within the context or within the constraints of what you want to implement right it might not be a general purpose processor but it has the capabilities of doing all the types of computations that you need right what if for example i had two multipliers right i would create a custom instruction set which can do two multiplications at the same time right what if i had multiple memory banks i might have more complicated load or store instructions that can load two values at the same time or store load one store another or store two values at the same time all of those many different combinations are possible okay and that is essentially how we come up with custom hardware designs for various problems 